single player games are dying. They're dying. They're, they're in fact they're they're dead. You know, single player games are dead, never to return. Oh wait, actually, uh, God of War came out. That that happened. Never mind. They're back. They're returning. Life is great. The industry is great. We're getting the return of single player games. Studios are finally gonna realize that, yeah, single player games. We're not. We're not gonna just go quietly into the night. We're here to stay. You know. Except. That's not actually true. Single player games aren't dead. They aren't dying. They, they're not making a return. They're not, they're not doing anything. Really. They've been here. They are moving to a degree, I think. Um, their place in the industry is changing. And on the market is changing. However, this isn't the death of a of an entire kind of game for starters let's just debunk the notion that single player games are either dying or dead i mean i look back to some of the best experiences either that i've had in gaming these past uh, couple years or that you know seem great and I'm, I'm gonna get to but i haven't gotten to play yet and there's a ton of single player games right i just don't see where people are getting this idea from. I mean, you just look back to, you know, 2017, 2016, you see a mass amount of games. Like, what about Cuphead, Doom, Titanfall 2? Um, you know, this generation, we've gotten Bloodborne, The Witcher 3. I mean, there have been many, and these are just some off the top of my head, some of the best ones. Like, I'm playing through Nier Automata right now, and... It's like everyone's just saying, where'd all the single player games go? And I'm sitting there and I'm saying, well, yeah, where did they all go? Um, they're really where they've always been. They're right here. Um, this idea that these games are dying or, or dead are just false. I mean, you look back the past couple of years, maybe they're not in the, the numbers they used to be. But is that necessarily a problem? As long as there's, uh, you know, enough games coming out and enough choice, you know, a steady stream of some quality single-player games, do, do we have a problem with the industry being more uh, single-player focused? Um, I don't think I don't think there is a problem there. Like I said, as long as we have plenty of single player games and we do don't let anyone fool you otherwise that i don't see a problem now that people more people want to play with their friends more people have access to high speed internet than ever before and uh, there's naturally just going to be more of a focus on multiplayer but that isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as we do have our witchers and our and our Uncharted's and our The Last of Us's and other games like that still coming out, and they are, and they are. So I don't see the big problem there. In regards to the shift from AAA single A single player games to more double A players single player games, right? Like the more mid market game, you know, the thirty dollar, forty dollar game, or you know, twenty five dollars or whatever they decide to price it, like a Hellblade send you a sacrifice, right? I think Hellblade is kind of been hailed as that return to the middle market game, and I think that's a fair, fair point to bring up, and I think we will see more middle market single player games as the AAA market does move more multiplayer focused. Now, you might be wondering, is this a good or a bad thing? And in my mind, it, it's a great thing, actually. Um, I think it gets single-player games away from what has been their biggest issue in this move towards a more of a focus on multiplayer games. And that being the time-played proposition, right? So we see more and more people than ever before basing their purchases on how much, you know, money they spend for how many hours on our turn right and while i think this is a terrible way to judge a game i mean we see it 
clearly being a popular stat. I mean, we've all seen the controversy going around now with the, you know, price per hour stat um, on games. And the reason for this is because multiplayer games have such a high price per hour, and that's because technically they're endless. You can play a multiplayer game for a very long time and not get bored because each match always plays out differently and when you're playing with friends you keep coming back and it creates these games that are very long right so how can how can uncharted you know which is 10 to 15 hours maybe say uh you should spend 60 dollars on us when battlefield is saying you should spend 60 dollars on us and you're gonna get you know possibly 10 times if not more out of that game depending on how much you play it so what has happened in the for a while was the triple a games decided to go away from linear games to more wide open right we see every game making their game a uh, open world game stuffed with 8,000 markers and icons just trying to, you know, th to, to have that hundreds of hours kind of tagline on the back of the box on their marketing campaigns to get people to buy it, to, to uh, you know, hang with the multiplayer games, to be that value proposition. The problem is, naturally, as you can imagine, the this just leads to too many what I would call bloated games. I mean... You look at a lot of games, and it's this would be so much better as like a 10-hour straightforward game. Um, Assassin's Creed, you know, Far Cry, not necessarily linear, but I mean, does it need all those icons? I mean, uh, Watch Dogs, while I didn't play it, from my understanding, would have benefited greatly from uh, from a more unique maybe just linear more focus on stealth as opposed to this you know ubisoft formula um and, and that's not to say that there isn't a place for these single player games with big open worlds and uh you know hundreds of hours you know you look at witcher and the fallout games i mean these games are clearly games that benefit and would not be what they are without their massive open worlds and their freedom and their you know amounts of content but every game doesn't have to be that and what we see is more and more games were are attempting to be that that time sink game and the problem is nobody has time for that right and, and if you're a gamer with more or more time than money then yeah i can see how more content is important in your games but what happens for at least gamers with more money than time or at least feel like they wouldn't mind replaying games right i think that's a big thing I, i'm biased i replay games all the time i like a shorter game naturally because it means i can replay it more i can re-experience that more whereas these hundred hour games it's like you know getting through it once is a big time commitment let alone a second or third time or how many ever you want to play it so i can see how for somebody that doesn't replay games and doesn't feel view games that way that that 60 dollars for you know 100 150 hours is a lot better and more enticing than necessarily a 10 hour linear experience and that's fine and i think there should be both options but i think moving to a $30 price tag for a game like Hellblade works perfectly because they don't have to be a as much of a value proposition. They say, look, you know, we're half price and you still get, you know, six, seven hours, whatever. I haven't played it yet. Um, I haven't played Hellblade yet, but you still have that a decent length single player experience for, you know, a decent price. And it seems like that will allow the return of these more linear uh story driven games because there i think there is a place for those kinds of games in the market and i think having these games kind of getting lost in these massive open worlds i mean there are advantages 
to a stricter, more linear uh, form for a game. And I think we need to keep that in mind. You know, it, it helps you avoid the, the issue of, you know, the world it, it hangs in the balance, right? You know, go save the world. And then, you know, on the way, it's like, you know, my garden's been overrun. Can can you help me out, you know? Like, we've all been there on our open world games where you're just doing these inane side quests. And, yeah, it's part of what makes them great. But at the same time, you know, if you have a 10-hour game that is focused and paced and you you as a writer and a developer and studio can control the pacing and the story it, it allows different kinds of stories to be told in a different way than otherwise and that kind of game can return in the form of a $20, $30, $40 game whatever it may be and I think that will help them kind of regain their footing. Um, so I do agree that single player games are moving to a kind of new market to a degree. I mean, obviously, we're still going to get our AAA, you know, Fallouts, um, you know, Mass Effects, or not really after Andromeda. We'll see with, with the future of that franchise. But, you know, Bethesda seems committed, Sony seems committed. To kind of stick with these single player games. So we're still going to get some. Uh, Ubisoft is kind of in that in between where it's kind of live service. Where they're probably moving more towards live service games. Which is unfortunate. But I just I don't see this being the end for single player cam uh, campaigns and games. And yes, I mean we see Call of Duty dropping theirs. Right? Call of Duty single player, and it's kind of sad that it's gone. A game series that was founded on single player only, really. Just because Call of Duty discontinues their single player campaign, and just because Visceral Games get shut down, doesn't mean that all of a sudden an entire type of game is going away. The gaming community is full of sheep, full of followers that really just repeat whatever they hear it's an echo chamber one youtuber big youtuber or whatever releases a thing you know sing the death of single playing single player campaigns you know single player games didn't die they were murdered or whatever and all of a sudden everyone's repeating it instead of sitting there and thinking for themselves and saying oh wait a second what about the single player games i've been playing the past couple years they're not dead they weren't murdered so yeah just don't don't just believe everything you hear. Think for yourself, and uh, I hope maybe if you've you know been giving in to the idea that single player games are dead, I've at least allowed you to maybe start thinking, huh? Are they really dead? Yeah, maybe there's not as many as there used to be, but there still is a strong market for the single player game. So I'll leave you with that, and hope to see you guys later.